Lembit, have we brought this crisis on ourselves? Yes, we have. And I agree with some of what you say, but not everything, Mark. Uh, if you actually look at the history of the Ukraine situation, it's far more nuanced than I think people make out. There's a great film called uh, Ukraine on Fire by Oliver Stone. Uh, it was made in 2016, quite prophetically. And it points out that the West hasn't exactly been blameless. And we could see this coming. Uh, the short version of this is that for about eight years, we've been fighting a proxy war against Russia, uh, which may not be a popular thing to say here in the UK. But if you look at Donetsk and Luhansk, which are two of the very contested areas, we have actually been uh, putting people who really have rather unsavory views and quite anti-Russian views in positions of power from the West. Now, it's, it's, this is like a 90-minute conversation, so I reduce it to 20 seconds. In essence, we need to see where this came from. And perhaps I wouldn't agree with the level of bullishness that people are saying that we have to militarise. We need to actually understand the cause in the first place. Why do I think all this? Well, I grew up in Northern Ireland. And once again, it was all the terrorists were bad. The, the, the British government's good. In the end, a negotiated settlement has saved lives. And that could save us from war now. Well, it's interesting that you've uh, made those set of points, Lembit. Sophie, what's your view on this? Am I giving Putin too much of an easy ride? This is, of course, the man who has invaded Ukraine. Well, no, ultimately, the reason why Ukraine got invaded was because Putin invaded. We can't blame the West for Putin invading because that was a decision he himself made. However, the reason why it's been able to escalate to this stage is largely because of the West's you know, incompetence. I mean, the net zero thing is a massive part of that because a lot of Europe's reliance on gas obviously comes from Russia. Therefore, you know, they've been able to manipulate Europe into sort of shutting up and, you know, not giving enough resistance to Putin because of this stupid green obsession. I mean, I would rather climate change than World War Three, but this is kind of where we're at right now. And we've, got, we've just got to get over it, to be honest, because we're giving that man far too much control to manipulate nations because of his gas. I mean, we saw it with Germany and why they were so reluctant to cut them off of the SWIFT banking system. The reason why is because Russia would simply just turn off the gas. And that, to be honest, Russia is military powerful, but it's not their weapons and it's not their soldiers that are giving Russia the amount of power they have. It is their gas. And Lee that's the reason why they're able to do what they've got to do. Yeah, Leo, um, is Putin a monster of the West's making? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the West does bear some, some responsibility because the West is vastly superior and everybody wants to be in the West. This is what the problem is. In the Ukraine, they've had civil uprisings. They've had votes. Like, uh, Zelensky got 75% of the vote. Most people in Ukraine want to be allied with Europe, allied with the West, and, and have liberal Western values and democracy. And it's, it's ridiculous to say that there's nuance in this situation. What nuance can there be when you've got this military dictator going in and massacring civilians? There's no nuance there whatsoever. Okay. It's absolutely not nuanced. You, you mentioned Donetsk, Luhansk. Those are areas of Ukraine that have been in infiltrated by Russian militia. By Russian militia to destabilise Ukraine is absolutely disgusting. Any, any involvement that the West has in Ukraine, you know, and I admit the West has done terrible things in other countries in the past. You know, we, we've seen Afghanistan, we've seen Iraq, we've seen terrible things, terrible things done. But in Ukraine, the West has only done what the people in Ukraine want. They want to be part of the West and we should support them in that and we should help them expel these Russian intruders. And as for Russian military strength, what military strength? Strength. This is like this is like if France and Germany and the UK decided to invade Wales and couldn't do it in a weekend. It's an absolute joke. There's a 65-kilometer convoy of Russian tanks and trucks and supply units absolutely just in a logjam because they haven't planned. They can't actually they can't actually do this because the failings of a of a of a centrally controlled economy and a centrally co controlled political system is that people do things out of fear instead of out of out of desire and out of being able to do it and provide a good service. So we're seeing the absolute failure of Putin. And the, he's got a Potemkin army. It looks good in the parades, but when it comes to the crunch, he can't even take Ukraine. He, he's, this has absolutely embarrassed him. If I was China, I would be looking to annex 
Russia right now. It, before this crisis, it, it had an economy the size of Spain's. Right now, it's got an economy the size of a Tesco Extra. Just march in there. If I, if I was Xi Jinping, I'd march in there and I'd take it. I wouldn't even take You wouldn't even need an army. Just a, a taxi with some, you know, goons in it. Just, man, the, a, a absolute joke. Okay. Russia is embarrassed I'll have itself. to correct you. I think they've got the economy the size of a Tesco Express. It's actually <laughs> worse than the picture you paint. Lembit? <laughs> no, uh, OK, this is why we're not making much progress, because if you choose to ignore what's actually been going on, Leo, for the last eight years, you choose to ignore the provocations that, whether you like it or not, are there in black and white. Now, I don't think that Oliver Stone is a patsy. The conspiracy for, theorist oh, right. Oliver Stone. So hold on a second. I don't think Oliver Stone is a patsy for, uh, for, for Putin. I, I'm sure from what you said, you haven't actually said I think he it. and you <laughs> are patsies for Putin. OK, OK, fine. Uh, let me try and finish the point, please. I don't think that Oliver Stone made that video to be popular with people like you. I do know a lot of Russian people, and it's surprising how many of them have some sympathy for the situation. Now, you may not like that, Leo, but when it comes down to it, there is nuance here. We made promises uh, about not trying to get uh, Ukraine into NATO. We seem to be breaking those promises. Putin has said... Promises? Clearly, Putin, a week ago, 10 days ago, Putin was promising he wasn't going to invade Ukraine. He promised he'd turn the troops round, and they were, they were departing. So when we talk about promises, I mean, come on. Like, when has right, NATO right, let, ever attacked? Okay, when have let, we ever attack Russia. Well, Tell let, me, let, let when, me. when have we ever attacked been, Russia? When has Europe ever attacked Russia? We've been fighting proxy wars all over the world, Leo, and I think Mark... Just as well. We need to spread Western liberal democracy. The point. OK, let's, let's force liberal democracy on people. We're not let's forcing ignore. it. The okay. people in Ukraine... The people in Ukraine voted for it. The people in Ukraine want okay, it. OK, Leo, tell me about the, the dispute about the second language in some of those regions. You obviously know all about this. Tell me what happened in that dispute. You don't know, do you? Oh, why don't you tell me? Why well, don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me Vladimir Putin's, like, inside leg no, measurement? You know what I mean? What, what is the second language so got you, to do with so anything? You don't, well, th th you've actually just made my point for me. You don't even know the dispute that's taken place in parts of uh, Ukraine about making Russia... So you'd Russia go in and massacre language. people over a second language? OK, let are you the Are you the Scottish National Party? OK, Leo, let me just tell you something. A significant proportion of my family was exterminated by the Soviet Union. Now, you can talk over me if you want, but I've got no reason to love Russia. I've got no reason to talk up Russia. I'm sitting here saying this because I've actually bothered to do my research here. And there is a nuance here. And, Leo, you can keep interrupting me and telling me that I'm a patsy for Putin. I You're don't like what's going on, but I do not like it whenever people like yourself pretend you understand the situation like it's black and white when it's not. Well, Limbit, help us with the grey area. What is the grey area? Because uh, from the point of view of, of Leo and perhaps many people watching this programme, uh, a dictator, an awful dictator, has illegally entered a sovereign, independent European country. Yeah. Uh, th three things to say. First of all, the West has to be very careful before it preaches about illegal wars. Uh, secondly... There is this disputed <laughs> behaviour towards Russian citizens in Ukraine where many of them feel discriminated against and they do look to Russia uh, for support. Thirdly, we have broken conditions that we agreed with Russia about Ukraine. We've broken the rules. And then what actually, conditions? There's, there's, well, for example, not trying to encourage uh, UK, uh, Ukraine to go into NATO, uh, uh, because Putin's concern is... When once, did Ukraine, when did once Ukraine the, join NATO? Once the Ukraine... Nothing. When did Ukraine join NATO? It when were there any concrete steps? It there was talk, like, a decade ago. Okay. But when were there okay. concrete Lem steps? Mark, I'd like to answer your question. Lembit, Lem I'd like to your answer point. your question. It's quite clear that there are overtures to try to get the Ukraine to enter NATO. You've just said so yourself. Why would Ukraine need to enter NATO? I mean, it's not like Russia's going to invade Russia it. Invade it. <laughs> the, 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 the bottom line here is... Putin I mean, maybe is we should have put that... We should have rushed that application through. So it would yes. have seemed like the sensible thing and to that do. that would be Putin's concern, because Putin believes that once you're in NATO, you have to do what the United States says. He's Putin's concern right now is having his ear tickled with an ice pick. You Putin know? has completely embarrassed himself on the world stage. All his generals and all his, all his cronies are having their money uh, taken away from them. They're culpable in war crimes now, and they're going to look to I'm, depose I'm, them to protect I'm, I'm themselves. I'm not going to raise my voice to answer your question or your comment there, Leo, but I'm going to finish my point. Yeah. This is the problem. Leo, you're shrill, talking over me. Your attempt to try to defeat my argument by making polemical statements doesn't get us anywhere. It actually makes the world closer to the midnight nuclear holocaust that none of us want. 
What I'm suggesting is it might just be good if we learn from the lessons of history here. Let me stress again, I have absolutely no reason to defend the former Soviet Union, which caused How? me to be born got... in the United Kingdom. OK. I've got one thing. I'm worried about being better dead than red. I've got Lend one thing. I grew up, Leo. And now what I'm saying to you is it doesn't help for you to keep interrupting because you are being an allegory for what the West is well, doing. Look, I've, got one Russia, thing. Where a very I've got one thing. I've got one thing to see. John, Leo, one tiny thing to see. Putin's doing. If you'll finish... Speaking about how much you love Vlad Vladimir Putin, how did appeasement of Hitler work out? OK, you know what? That's a pretty amazing thing you just said, Leo, because you're not really listening to anything I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is whether you like Putin or you dislike Putin, it's, it's the politics of total foolishness to not ask yourself the question why so many Russians are actually sympathetic to Putin. They aren't. Putin. None well, of the Russians they... I know are sympathetic to him at all. They feel themselves part of Europe. They feel themselves part of the West. They want to be part of the West. Right. Now, what Leo, is a democratic you... Russia? Let me Leo... the fact here. Here's a fact f for you, Leo. You clearly don't know the history that I've been discussing, and why should you? I mean, this has been a recent thing. I've applied myself to it because I actually employ a Russian. Well, look, who's quite I, I, to I'm all for a nuance. We should start with history Lembit. rather than starting at shouting at each other, and maybe that's what we should do uh, in the course of the next few to de escalate the situation. Lembit, I'm all for a, a nuanced look at this complex problem, and uh, clearly, Putin is the aggressor, and you're no Putin cheerleader, and I'm sure that. Uh, Leo says that in jest to a degree, although it underpins a point he's making about your sympathies to the Russian side. Very, very briefly, we've only got a couple of seconds, but Lembit, we can discuss till the cows come home why it's happened. How do we fix it, Lembit? We talk. We negotiate. We don't scream at Putin the way that maybe... And what does a settlement look like, Lembit, do you think? Uh, I would say that we're going to have to start with a ceasefire. Secondly, we have to listen. Uh, yeah, Russia, Russia we're, not, keep... we're not shooting at him. How do we? How do we? How do we have a ceasefire when we we're make, not shooting at him? So, we Sophie, how does this play out? How do we fix it? Do, uh, do we let Russia keep Crimea? Do do uh, Ukraine promise never to join NATO? What's the answer? Ultimately, I think there is only one way how all of this is going to end, and that is that Putin is going to end up dead somehow. Either somebody internally or somebody externally will take him out. And I think the Russians will end up taking him out. Because okay. of the damage, he's cutting the entire country off from the world. And someone is, you know... Sophie, he's going to Sophie it. is like Christine Hamilton, who told me on this programme she wants the assassination of Putin. And my good friend, Lembid Opik, wants jaw-jaw, not war-war, around a massive table. How about you, Leo? How do we fix this? We get rid of Putin uh, if we have to create some sort of uh, golden bridge for him to walk over and retire. Uh, that's, that's what happens. But, I mean, we, we need to crush Putin economically, mil militarily, and support the Ukrainian people uh, to, to live their democratic desires. They want to be part of the West. Let's help them uh, live, that, live that dream. And also, we should be wary of people in this country who are in the pocket of Putin, because there are more than a few of them.